Welcome back. In this part, we'll cover how to manipulate strings. As we've seen, you cannot simply assign a string after it has been declared. Take the following declarations, for example. The following would be a compiler error, as we saw before, because we cannot reassign a static declaration. The following would be allowed, but it would cause a memory leak, since we reassign a pointer, but lose the reference to the original chunk of memory. We have to keep in mind that a string is a character array, which is a memory address, so we have to treat them appropriately. Instead, to set the contents of a string, you must copy the contents of one string into it. Fortunately, the string library, string.h, provides a copy function, as well as many other useful string functions. The copy function is strcpy, and takes two arguments, a destination string and a source string. The names of all the string functions are generally abbreviated for historical reasons. strcpy copies the contents of the source string into the destination string. The order of the arguments matches the order of the assignment operator. The contents of the right argument are placed into the left argument. This function, as well as most string library functions, assumes that your source string is properly null terminated. It is your responsibility to ensure that the destination string is large enough to hold the contents of the source string. Let's take a look at a few examples. Let me go ahead and declare and initialize a character array of size 10. Now let's copy my name into it. All we're doing is copying the contents of a static string into a dynamic string. Now to do this, we're gonna to have to include the string library. We can always overwrite the contents. However, it's always our responsibility that we're not copying a larger string into a smaller array. It works in this particular instance because we got lucky. However, if we do this as a matter of routine, then eventually we're going to corrupt our memory or have a segmentation fault. For example here, we've overwritten our program's own memory, bleeding into another string stored in our program, causing it to print this. It is essential that we be able to tell how many characters are stored in our string, which is its length. The string library again provides a function to determine that. strlen, short for string length, takes a string and returns the number of characters in it, but it does not include the null terminating character. Let's take a look. Let me go ahead and create a message again. There are 12 ASCII characters in our message. Let's go ahead and cut it short like we did before. After we cut it short, there are only the five H-E-L-L-O characters. We got lucky that it actually null terminated the first character here, but that's because of our compiler or operating system that's being used by this website. If we took it to another system with another compiler, we could get completely different results. Before we move on, let's go ahead and write a useful function 
using what we've already seen so far. We'll take a string s, which we denote as being a const string because we're not going to be making changes to it, and we'll make a deep copy of its contents, returning a pointer to the newly dynamically allocated string array. Our first step is to allocate enough memory for it. We can use strlen to determine how many characters there are in the original string. However, remember that it does not include the null terminating character. So we need to add one. This is a common pattern when dealing with strings in C. We then copy the contents of s into copy, which takes care of the null terminating character for us and return a pointer to the newly dynamically allocated string. Remember we had truncated it on lines 17 through 19. So it only copies up to the first null terminating character. Copying string A into string B overwrites the original contents of B, as we saw in the first examples. An alternative operation is to append or concatenate the contents of one string onto the end of another string. The strcat function can be used to concatenate the, a source string to the end of a destination string. Just as before, it assumes that both strings are properly null terminated and it assumes that the destination string is large enough to hold the contents of both strings. Let's try it out. Now I've set up my first name and my last name. Let's set up my full name, which is going to take on the format of last name, comma, space, first name. It's easy enough to copy my last name into the full name, but now I don't want to lose the rest of it. I want to append or concatenate a comma and a space. And finally, I want to append my first name. The string library also provides byte limited versions of both the copy and concatenation functions. strncat and strncpy are similar to their original counterparts, but they take a third argument n. Each function copies or concatenates at most n bytes or characters. Both stop early if they encounter the null terminating character before processing n bytes. Both will only include the null terminating character if it's encountered within the first n bytes. Let's take a look at a simple example. Here I've set up a string with my full name. Let's set up a string to hold my nickname, Chris. C-H-R-I-S plus the null terminating character. Now I want to copy Christopher into nickname, but I only want to copy at most the first five characters. So I use strncpy. So 
I specify that at most five characters should be copied. There's no null terminating character within the first five characters, so don't forget it to add it yourself. and only part of the string is copied.